Hi again, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at third declension nominals and how to find their real stems. One category of third declension nouns is very simple. That is, the real stem of the noun is the nominative, nominative form. And while in the majority of cases, third declension noun st stems change uh, when you move from the nominative singular to other cases, there are a few like this where they don't change at all. And so all you have to do in subsequent cases is tack the case ending onto the end of the nominative form. So, for example, yason, the name, uh, the real stem of yason is yason, and the genitive then is yasonos. Similarly, simon, the real stem is just the nominative form, simon, and you add the endings onto that uh, real stem, so the genitive is simonos. Similarly for ha ampelon, uh, the genitive is ampelonos, and ha helene, uh, the genitive form is helenos. There are many other nouns though, uh, third declension nouns, with which once we move outside the nominative case, something changes about the stem. And these can be very confusing if we don't notice that there are patterns to them. And so one type of pattern is in which we have the uh, nominative form uh, plus a tau at the end of it as the real stem. So uh, one example of this is the uh, noun topnuma, which means spirit, wind or breath. The real stem isn't just pneuma, it's pneumat. And so the genitive form is pneumatos. And all of the other case forms are going to use that pneumat stem. Similarly, to onoma, we add a tau onto onoma, onomat. And so the genitive is onomatos. Broma becomes bromat. Uh, and so the genitive is bromatos, and uh, tomelli, honey, uh, you add a tau to the uh, nominative form to make the real stem, and so the genitive form becomes melitos. Another pattern when it comes to the real stems of third declension nouns is exemplified by the word mater. And so uh, I tend to refer to it as the mater type of third declension noun. So with the word hemeter, the real stem is uh, actually meter with a short e instead of the uh, long eta. But often with this kind of third declension noun, that short epsilon will drop out and we just get the stem mater. Uh, we're going to see with later uh, uh, cases that sometimes that epsilon reappears. But when we look at the genitive form of meter, we find that it's metros. So you can see the stem is meter, the epsilon has dropped out, and we add the genitive ending uh, for third declension nouns on the end. A similar noun is heithugater, daughter, and the stem again is thugater with a a short epsilon that sometimes drops out, as in the genitive, and so the genitive form is thugatros. Similarly, ha pater, uh, the real stem is pater, and the genitive form is patros. Now, before we look at some of the other types of third declension nouns and their stems, we need to step aside for a moment and notice that there are patterns in Greek of what happens when two short vowels bump up against one another. So we're going to see this with some of the genitive forms when we add os onto a, a real stem that ends in a short vowel. Um, you can see uh, krea, which is the real stem of kreas. 
when we add os onto the end of that, the alpha at the end of the stem crea runs into the short o, the omicron of the os ending. And something strange happens. Those two vowels combine to form one long vowel, omega. And so the genitive form of uh, creas is creos. That's going to seem really strange unless you remember that what's happening is the alpha from the stem is combining with the omicron of the ending. We see something similar when uh, we take the genitive form of the noun genos. Uh, the real stem, as we're going to see in a moment, is gene, which ends in an epsilon, a short vowel. And so when that epsilon runs into the omicron, another short vowel of the os ending, the epsilon and omicron combine, but this time to produce a diphthong, uh, u, omicron, upsilon. These combinations are predictable using the chart at the right-hand side here. You can see that uh, an epsilon in the top row um, combining with an alpha uh, is going to be the one place where you don't get any long vowel or diphthong. The alpha just overpowers the epsilon when they run together and you're left just with an alpha. Uh, but aside from that, all of these combinations are going to produce a long vowel or a diphthong, either omega or eta as long vowels, or the diphthongs a, epsilon iota, or u, omicron upsilon. So an alpha that runs into an omicron at the end of that top row is going to form a long o-class vowel omega. Uh, when an epsilon in the middle row runs into an alpha, they form an eta. When an epsilon runs into another epsilon, they form the diphthong a, with epsilon iota. But when an epsilon runs into an omicron at the end of that middle row, uh, they form together u, the u diphthong. Then in the bottom row, when omicron runs into alpha, again we get the uh, omega uh, combination. When omicron and epsilon run into one another, again we get the u diphthong. And when an omicron and on it and another omicron run into one another, they form an omega, a long uh, O-class vowel. Um, this chart will be important for you to memorize because we're going to be using it in many other places so that we can predict some uh, odd forms that would otherwise seem irregular. And if we can remember this chart, what that means is we don't have to memorize a whole bunch of irregular forms because we can predict uh, what the, the vowel changes are going to be. So with those vowel combinations in mind, we can look at a few other kinds of third declension nouns. One is what I call the ichthus type, and this is the type where we form the real stem by just dropping off the sigma that's at the end of the nominative uh, form. Um, in fact, that sigma can be thought of as a nominative ending. Uh, and so it would make sense to drop it off uh, when we're going to find the real stem. But in any case, uh, with hohals, that gives us the real stem hal, dropping off the sigma. And when we add the genitive uh, ending os, the genitive form is halos. Similarly with ichthus, uh, we drop the sigma to find the real stem ichthu, and the os ending is added onto that to form ichthuos. We've already seen that tokreos is going to behave slightly differently, but again, this isn't because it's an irregular form or a different kind of third declension noun. It's just because of the way the short vowels combine when they meet. So since there's an alpha at the end of the real stem crea, that alpha combines with the omicron of os and that gives us the genitive form creos. Some of these third declension nouns have a, a hidden consonant, often a nun or a delta, that you can't see. It's covered up because it has collapsed in the nominative form with the final sigma, the sigma ending of the nominative. 
but when you take that sigma off, it reappears. So the uh, interrogative pronoun tis is one of these. The real stem, once you take the sigma off, is teen. And so then in the other cases, like the genitive, we get forms like teenos. Uh, similarly, with hehelas, the real stem is helad, and so then the genitive form is helados. Uh, har he parthis, uh, Parthian, the real stem again has a delta reappearing and it's parthid, so the genitive form is parthidos. And ha or he pais, the real stem is pied, and the genitive form is piedos. Now, with some types of third declension nouns that end in sigma in their nominative form, uh, something different happens when we drop that sigma off, and that is that uh, the real stem ends up uh, being a changed version of the vowel at the end of the nominative stem. So with hey polis, uh, which it belongs to the polis type of third declension nouns, um, we drop the sigma and the iota at the end of the stem changes into an epsilon. Um, with Antioch use, instead of uh, changing the upsilon at the end of the stem after we've dropped the sigma, uh, we just drop that upsilon off and Antioch is the real stem. But again, it ends in an epsilon. And another type uh, that ends in an epsilon in its real stem is the genos type. Uh, so ta genos, we drop off the sigma of the nominative form, and the omicron uh, of genos changes to an epsilon in the real stem, uh, so we are left with gene as the real stem of ta genos. The genos type of uh, third declension noun is always uh, neuter, in gender, and that's going to become significant later on. And the polis type of uh, third declension noun is always feminine. That'll also become significant later on. Uh, but for the time being, these three types, the polis, the hirius, and the genos types of third declension nouns um, look very similar in their real stems. What happens with these when we add the os ending on for the uh, genitive? Well, we have some uh, changes in the vowels. Um, in two of these types, though, the changes are actually irregular, and they don't fit the chart that uh, we learned just above. In the polis type, we might expect the epsilon at the end of the stem to combine with the omicron to give us polus with the omicron upsilon diphthong, but that's not what happens. Instead, we keep the epsilon and just lengthen the omicron to an omega. So the genitive form of hey polis is poleos. Why? That's just one of these irregular uh, things that you're going to have to remember with the polis type uh, third declension nouns. Similarly, with the hirius type, uh, antioche uh, as the stem runs into the os ending and instead of uh, the epsilon and omicron uh, joining and becoming u, we get the same lengthening of the omicron, and the genitive form is antiocheos. Um, at this point, you might be wondering, why did we bother learning that chart if we're going to see exceptions like this? But these are actually quite rare exceptions, and you're going to be using the standard vowel connections all over the place. And the regular ones show up in the genos type. So here, the stem gene ends in an epsilon, and the expected thing happens. When it runs into the omicron of the os ending, the two vowels join to become the u diphthong, omicron upsilon, and so the genitive form of ta genos is genus. We get a similar uh, regular predictable vowel combination with the asthenase type of third declension uh, word. Actually, asthenase is a third declension adjective rather than a third declension noun. Uh, but uh, with the asthenase type, 
we drop off the final sigma and the epsilon uh, comes from uh, shortening the eta that was before the sigma in the nominative form. So instead of asthenes, the real stem becomes asthene. But then adding on the genitive uh, ending of os, uh, the epsilon and the omicron combine predictably to form the omicron upsilon diphthong, and the genitive form is asthenus. I've tried to point out some common third declension patterns here so that you can uh, move beyond just having to memorize tons and tons and tons of seemingly irregular forms and you can begin to see some predictable patterns. But uh, it must be said that with some uh, third declension nouns, quite a few of them, there really aren't any uh, patterns that they fit into for creating their real stem. Now, fortunately, with most of these uh, strictly irregular uh, real stem changes, the endings that you add on the end are pretty standard, pretty predictable. You don't usually have uh, final stem vowels in these cases, and so there aren't changes to the endings. That's the good news. The bad news is with these nouns, you just have to remember, you just have to memorize the real stem. Uh, which usually involves uh, remembering the genitive singular form along with the nominative form. So ha aner, uh, the real stem is andr, and the eta of the nominative form drops out and is replaced for some reason by a delta, and so the genitive form is andros. Hegune, a woman, uh, the eta drops off in the real stem and is replaced by alpha iota kappa. And so the real stem is gunaik, giving us the genitive form gunaikos. Togala, milk. Uh, nothing's dropped off, but the uh, kappa tau combination is added on to the real stem to give us galact. And the genitive form then is galactos. And tahudor. Uh, drops the omicra, uh, omega rho and replaces it with an alpha tau so that the real stem is hudat and the genitive form is hudatos. Finally, hapus, foot, uh, really drops the uh, second half of the nominative form, the upsilon and the sigma, and replaces it with a delta so the real stem is pod. Uh, from which we get the genitive form podos. And here's a list of all the types we've looked at. Again, this is a lot to take in at once. I don't expect you to remember all of these details uh, just from watching the video, but we're going to be practicing this in the Paideia exercises and uh, absorbing these irregular forms slowly over uh, the weeks. So uh, this is just an introduction. This is just to give you the framework uh, that you can work with as you go into the Paideia exercises.